Hi guys, welcome back to Take 5 with Pretty Nerdy. Um, I have another indie spotlight for you today. We are going to talk about a book called Tights. Created by Chris Wagand, art by Edison Neo, and lettering is by Reed Hinkley Barnes. And now the team just announced the other day that they have um, added a new colorist into the mix. They have not announced who yet, but that's very exciting news. That'll be for um, issue number two, I think. Now, Tights also had a Kickstarter. Um, just like the last book we did, they like nailed their goals. They wanted around two grand, I think, and they ended up having almost 200 backers and they came up with almost $10,000 and they have this really cool page like in the beginning of the book where everybody who um, you know, contributed to the Kickstarter gets mentioned. So I think that was really nice. Now I have a synopsis in front of me, so I'm gonna read it to you so you kind of have a feel for what we're looking at here. Um, so the world is recovering from COVID-21. Global economies are in the toilet. Crime rate approach record highs. And now everyday superheroes, AKA tights, have emerged in an attempt to right society's wrongs. Unfortunately, most of these tights don't have any professional crime fighting skills to speak of, let alone superpowers. Nope, they're just out of work, regular Joe and Jane vigilantes who often find themselves clogging up the criminal justice system and fighting a losing battle against law and order. That's why there's a particular pain in the ass for our protagonist, the young, brash, anti-tights federal judge, Oliver Andrews. But when Oliver is blackmailed by a group of tights into helping them take down San Francisco's major crime syndicates, he will ultimately find himself becoming the very thing he hates most, a superhero. So I wanna preface this with saying like, this is not my typical go-to genre. So I don't really have a whole lot to compare it up against. But there's this little blurb on their website where it kind of gives you a sense of the fact that it's like not strictly just like the superhero genre. There's kind of like a little bit of a mix of everything in here. So how they describe it is it's for people who love dark humor, pop culture Easter eggs, and painfully relatable characters. So yeah, this is kind of a book for everybody, but there's also a disclaimer that it's a little bit vulgar and I agree, like I would not give this to children to read for sure. There's a lot of swear words and some blood. It's not as gory as I thought it was gonna be, but definitely heavy on the, on the swearing. <laughs> so definitely not for kids. A few other things I wanna mention is that I read this book digitally, which I do not normally do. So that may have um, affected my experience with the book in some way and there are a bunch of other reviews that I've seen that call this book action-packed, humorous, and extremely relatable. So I went in reading it with that information and the understanding that maybe, you know, I need to pay a little more attention to this book because of the format that I'm reading it in. My initial impression when I just opened up the book in my app was just that the art was really nice and streamlined and kind of felt a little more connected to the book than I had originally. And, you know, thought I might actually enjoy this. This is, looks pretty good. One thing that immediately struck me in the storyline was um, in the very beginning, there's a scene with a bank robbery and the narrator is explaining that uh, the, the being able to have a mask on and being required to have a mask on all the time makes it easier to be anonymous and it makes it easier to commit crimes. And this is actually something I've thought about in the real world, like during COVID-19, have crimes gone up because it's so much easier to like hide who you are? I don't know, I mean, something to look into, I guess. When it comes to the amount of dialogue and the flow of the dialogue, like this book hits it exactly where I need it to be. I'm somebody who, I don't want it to be super wordy. I want enough information to really get the picture, but I don't want to sit there and read and read and read and read. So this hit its stride right away. And it was like the exact amount of dialogue I needed. Very easy and very smooth flowing. Um, like I mentioned, there's a lot of swearing, a lot of bad words, so. If that's not your thing, maybe this isn't the book for you, but maybe give it a shot, I don't know. Um, when it comes down to the art, I think that this was a very streamlined book. Everything's really nice and neat. It's, it flows nicely. I would compare it to maybe the art in Chew from Rob Gilroy. I see some similarities there, but I don't see like a direct correlation, but that's the closest I can think of to explain it to you. I also really like that in the beginning of the story, the writer kind of like plays with you a little bit and you think you're being introduced to the main character a couple of times 
before you actually meet who is the main character. So, you know, that was fun. That kind of kept you hanging on for a little bit in the beginning. Now, when you get into the middle portion of the book, I think that's kind of where people are seeing um, that relatability that they're talking about in other reviews. There's um, a lot of real life situations, like there's a child feeling guilt because of, you know, his grandmother was killed in the line of fire and some of these situations with the tights. And then there's another scene where um, they're, they're trying to make a baby. So they're like having that really robotic scheduled, like, oh, I'm ovulating, let's do this right now. And it's just, it's very human in the middle of the book. And I like that they kind of go back and forth with that. Another part of that that I found really relatable is when the judge gets home and he's talking to his wife and she's like, shoes, shoes, take your shoes off. And there's in the background, in the, the um, narration, it says, this woman bought me a drink and then poured a drink over my head in the same night. I love her. And it was just really like a true nod to real life relationships. Like these are things that happen. <laughs> Another thing that I found really interesting is how in this book they're calling these like vigilante people tights, kind of like you would call zombies walkers, and I thought that was really cute. Now my favorite line in the book is when the judge's personal trainer gets called out because the judge hates tights and he finds out that the trainer is training tights. So the trainer says, as long as their money is green, I don't give a shit what color their undies are. And I thought that was hysterical. Um, and then, you know, you come up on the end of the book right after that, and it is exactly how I like it. You got just like a little sliver of what's coming next, and it, it was going where I wanted it to be going, so it ended perfect. Overall, I really enjoyed tights. Um, it was not what I expected. I thought I was going into it was gonna be a very heavy like superhero genre book, but it was not. It kind of broke down 50-50 between action and like the human aspect, which is what I like. I like a little backstory. I like some character building, things like that. Um, I'm gonna give this one a nine out of 10. I definitely would continue reading and I look forward to issue two coming out. I'm gonna leave in the notes below where you can find tights on Instagram and various websites and come back next week because we are going to do another indie spotlight. This one's a book called Lost Magic. Bye.